I would say iOS 26 feels like this update where Apple finally just like, you know, screw it. Let's just give them what they want. I was practically kidnapped on a trip involuntarily for about three weeks. And when I came back, I was like, iOS has gone far. I saw iOS 26 beta 7 at first and then beta 8 probably two, three days ago. My first thought was, where does iOS currently stand? I know with the upcoming release of iPhone 17 lineup and the rest of the iPads, I was wondering, okay, has iOS gotten to that point where I can actually tell someone, go ahead and install the developer and public betas? So I have it on my main device, but it's the one recording this video. I also have it on my secondary device, this iPhone 12 right here. One thing you'd really appreciate about 26 in general is the upgrade to performance. Yeah, I like how Apple actually pushed for an increase in performance, not just redesigning it with liquid glass and its performing was due to dealing with liquid glass. Yeah, many of you will notice if you run benchmarks on iOS 18 and run Water Geekbench and Toto or 3D Mac, whether CPU or GPU based, when you compare the benchmarks between 18 and 26, you'll see a significant increase in 26. That aside, we had very nice changes I noticed. For instance, when I'm listening to music on my way to work or wherever with my AirPods, I like that DJ mix, yeah, that auto mix, instead of just regular plain old crossfade we have on iOS 18. It's a very nice intuitive way. You know, some music, some songs now, they begin with some boring parts, but the DJ auto mix helps to like fast forward past the boring parts in a very nice creative way. It's a very good thing to use. When I'm making a call and I dial the number and let's say I'm too busy or like I can't really have the chance to know when the person has picked the call. That haptic feedback when the person answers the call is also very useful to know the exact point the person answers the call. Of course, one of my favorites will always be the OTPs. You know, previously OTPs could only come from either the default messaging app or Apple Mail app, but now it supports third-party apps. So people like me that use Gmail and can't use Apple Mail as my daily driver, we are covered, yeah. When I get OTPs now, I just see from Gmail and I tap it straight up. When you look at what's happening to Google right now, for instance, they are trying to close up Android, close it up with each passing year. It looks like Google is becoming Apple while Apple is becoming Android. I don't know. <laughs> it's just a crazy time we live in. There's one downside of iOS 26 I've still been dealing with. Let's just get it out of the way. Of course, the battery life is not as polished as it is on iOS 18, which means if you have iOS 26, I can assure you that your battery would die at least 10% faster than usual. Yeah, you can't escape that. So if you don't really mind, it's not really a deal breaker, but it's just something to keep in your mind before installing 26, which is very understandable. Like it or not, we are still in beta 8, even if this is probably the build we'll see before the release of iPhone 17. Another thing I appreciate is the notifications. Yeah, I got very bored of those animations on, like, they were just so linear and so smooth and regular, plain old slide in, slide out. I like that jiggle, that bounce you get on iOS 26 when you receive a notification. It looks very nice. I like the fact that Apple made it very playful. People used to report bugs back then. If you're trying to like customize your iPhone, like the home screen and maybe switch from the default icon to the dark, clear or tinted, you'd see that the icons glitch. They don't just switch like they are supposed to. But now, I'll tell you guys, even on this iPhone 12 and my 14 Pro, they just switch in a very linear and easy way and takes barely 3-4 seconds, everything is back in place. I still prefer the default icons anyway. You have also got to appreciate the Photos app. You know, Apple made it very annoyed on iOS 18, but luckily on 26, they listened and made it easier to use. One thing I keep wondering about is that camera app, yeah. I like 
Apple's idea in trying to make the camera app reflect the design idea and language of liquid glass. Well, I feel like initially it was a very difficult thing to implement and maybe don't find it hard, but I'm actually surprised. Like it or not, they actually did it. Yeah, the camera app is a lot better now. It's very responsive. And one thing I appreciate is how well it responds, even on this 60 hertz older iPhone 12. Like, the only difference between this and my 14 Pro is just the refresh rates. Like, the app is very stable now. I remember I made a video some while back about the fact that you couldn't even use iOS 26 on aftermarket batteries. But thankfully, I had on beta 6, was it 7? Apple allowed it and fixed that bug and your battery doesn't get stuck on 1% anymore and shows 0% as its maximum capacity. Yeah, thank you Apple. Although I don't know why they had to even put us through that hell. I had to restore my iPhone like three different times. If you want to use iOS 26 and you have been skeptical before, I think now is a good time for you to slide in. Just take note of what I said about the battery before, yeah. It's not really a big deal, it's something you can easily do with it, yeah, but performance-wise, everything is behaving well and the bugs are not really as annoying. There are bugs, no doubt, but they won't really affect the quality of life and your usability of the iOS. Anyways, let me know how iOS 26 has been for you and I'll see you guys around.